girls, it's Miss Buck and Miss Ella. Good morning, Ella. She has been hanging around our story times a lot lately, and it's so good to see you, and we are gonna miss you. But I have some news. Story times are going to start live come August 2nd. That is a Monday. Story times will be Mondays and Thursdays, 1030 in the courtyard, weather permitting, of course, and you need to wear your masks because we need to continue to be safe. So Mondays and Thursdays, 1030, live story times. I get to see you guys. I'm so excited. Although we will miss you too, Ella. We're missing you on the screen. I know that for sure. All right, today's story is called When a Dragon Comes to Stay. Good manners for little dragons. Good manners is an important part of life, and I hope that you have some good manners. This story is written by Cheryl Hart and illustrated by Rosalind Beardshaw, and the publisher is Imagination Press, Washington, D.C. All right. When a dragon comes to stay. When a dragon comes to stay. Does she go roar and shout my way? And does she snatch and keep the toys away from other girls and boys? Why no, dragons don't do that. A dragon knows she must play fair and wait her turn and always share. She knows the rules of all the games and never argues or complains when she's the last to have a go. That's just how dragons are, you know. When playing games of hide and seek, a dragon knows she must not peek. She counts out loud to 21, then calls out, ready, here I come. She never finds you right away. That's just the way that dragons play. At dinner time, does a dragon slurp or throw her food or moan or burp? And does she spill food on the floor or bang her spoon and bellow more? Why no, dragons don't do that. A dragon smiles and sips her tea and eats her sandwich daintily. She says the lettuce tastes just right and never ever gets a fright at anything that's on her plate. Yes, dragons really are that great. And when she's finished all her food, a dragon is polite, not rude. She takes her empty plate and cup and sometimes even washes up a dragon's helpful as can be. It's just a dragon's way, you see. Then when the day is nearly done and we are tired from having fun, do little dragons wail and moan or flap their dragon wings and groan? No, dragons don't do that. She skips upstairs to take a bath. Big bubbles make this dragon laugh. She scrubs her dragon scales and wings. All dragons love to do these things.
She puts some toothpaste on her brush, then cleans her teeth. She doesn't rush. She folds her wings up nice and neat and pulls some bedstocks on her feet. She doesn't make a fuss or frown. All dragons like to snuggle down. Then when it's time to go to bed, does this small dragon shake her head? Does this tired darling cry or pout? Or throw her favorite toys about? Why no, dragons don't do that. But if she's overtired or sad, that's when a dragon's when a dragon might turn turn bad. Then you must wrap her in a hug and make her cozy, safe and snug, and sing a gentle dragon song. A dragon won't stay sad for long. So pull the cozy covers tight to help her sleep all through the night. She will not whine, she won't be roary. All dragons love a bedtime story. She'll listen very carefully. How lovely can a dragon be? And if her snores keep us awake, and if they make the window shake, and if they rumble through the wall, well. She is a dragon after all. Oh, you know I love that one. I love that one because those are some good tips on being a good dragon. I am Miss Beth, and I just would like to remind you that story time will be live starting Monday, August 2nd in the courtyard at 1030, weather permitting, of course. And I am so excited to see all of you out there. I am Miss Beth, and I hope you have an absolutely fantastical day. And I cannot wait to see you then.